Our reading today from Mark begins with a series of begins a series of passages in which Jesus crosses back and forth across the Sea of Galilee. In this case, Jesus and his disciples are crossing from the Jewish communities where Jesus has been well received to the foreign side, the Gentile side. This scripture is a familiar one. Jesus and his disciples are on the Sea of Galilee when a windstorm comes up waves begin to swamp the boat. The disciples become scared. Jesus calms the storm, and then he asks them why they are afraid. An odd, odd question. Jesus insists, the beginning, let's go across to the other side, even though he wasn't always welcome on the other side. So they pile in the boat, and set across the Sea of Galilee. A number of disciples are fishermen, so they, they know how to sail. They're very familiar with the Sea of Galilee. And there's a little known sentence in there that says other boats were with him. There's like a little flotilla of boats crossing the Sea of Galilee along with Jesus and his disciples. Now, Jesus was the son of a carpenter. Like us, he was comfortable on dry land, but now he was in the world of sailors, experienced sailors. Sailors who were used to sudden storms that swept across the Sea of Galilee. So not only are they floating toward a side of the Sea of Galilee that wasn't friendly, a windstorm blows up across the sea and the waves begin to swamp the boat. It must have been terrible, because even those experienced sailors, they became scared. Now there's an odd scene here that many have made a great deal about, but it's, it's odd. Jesus is sleeping during the storm. Now this may be a literary device to show how cool and collected Jesus is. We don't really know for sure. But there's Jesus taking a nap during a horrific storm. The disciples wake him up and say, Don't you care that we're about to die, that we're perishing? Well, Jesus does his thing. He demonstrates his power and he calms the storm. Then he turns to the disciples these experienced sailors, and asks, why are you afraid? So here's this guy who walks on dry land, who's comfortable on dry land. He's talking to experienced sailors, men who would know when a storm is dangerous. And he wants to know, why are you afraid? Well, one of them might have said, I don't know if you notice Jesus, but the boat is starting to sink and we're afraid we're going to die. Yes, says Jesus. I know all that. But why are you afraid? The disciples, probably frustrated, maybe yelling at Jesus, answer the question. They answer the question of what they are afraid of. We're afraid we're going to die, Jesus. Don't you get it? Jesus does get it. It's the disciples who don't get it. Why are you afraid, is his question. You see, bad things will happen to the disciples, as they will discover when they're off on their own, after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Jesus does not guarantee that bad things will not happen, not to them, not to us. Later, as Jesus was preparing his disciples to go out into the world after he's gone, he warns his disciples. He has been wildly popular, and so his disciples have been popular. Everything is looking up. It's exciting to be a disciple. But suddenly he warns them, when you go out into the world, be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogue.
works. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings. And when they arrest you, Jesus says, not if you get arrested, but when you get arrested, do not be afraid. And he's telling them this, they're saying, this is not what we signed up for. He says, do not be afraid, over and over again throughout the gospel. But when bad things happen to us too, Jesus would ask us, why are you afraid? These are dangerous times, unpredictable times, scary times, violent times, especially for some of you, when we know that you are in danger, when you take Muni, when you go to Safeway, when you go down to lunch in Chinatown, in danger just because of what you look like, what you're speaking, what language you're speaking. It's time like these that you need to listen and pay attention to your surroundings, plan ahead, but also listen to the gospel. Listen to Jesus. Fear can freeze our lives. Fear can paralyze us. But listen to the gospel. Page after page throughout the gospel, Jesus repeatedly tells us, just as he told the disciples, do not, do not be afraid. Why should we not be afraid? Because we are not alone. He says, the Lord told us, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Did you hear that? I am with you always, not if you change your beliefs, not if you change your behavior, not if you follow this rule or that rule, no. He says, I am with you always to the very end of the age, period. The Lord is with us always, even to the end of the age. So fear not. Amen.